Hi, I'm your host Sam Khan. Welcome to Thing Guide, the show where we learn the way things work. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the role that a household radiator plays in the central heating system and the way it achieves its function. First up, we're going to be looking at what's inside a radiator and why. We all know that the role of a radiator is to make the room hotter. The way it achieves this is by pumping hot water through a series of pipes so that heat can dissipate into the surroundings. We'll take a closer look at this later on. So the internals of a radiator can just be thought of as one long piece of pipe in many U-bends consisting of copper. The reason for these bends is to increase the surface area for the heat exchange to occur through. Sometimes the pipes are flattened into thinner strips or metal fins are added to further increase the exposed surface. This is all commonly encased in a steel outer layer. You'll notice that both the materials used, i.e. the copper and the steel, are both metals. The reason for this is because of their high thermal conductivity, meaning their ability to transfer heat. That's all well and good, but how does hot water running through some pipes mean me getting a toasty room? Let's look at the three main ways that heat is transferred. Radiation, conduction and convection. First up, radiation. Heat, like other energy forms such as light, can be classified as radiation, specifically as infrared in the temperatures that we are used to. Energy travels in small packets called photons, which can travel without a medium, which is why we still receive heat from the sun despite the energy having to travel through the emptiness of space. So how are these photons released? They are released when electrons within heated atoms change in energy levels. This gives out some photons. The photons can be absorbed by nearby atoms or can go on and travel. When absorbed, some of the energy within them is transferred to the atom, heating them up as well. This can be seen with infrared cameras when we can point them at heated up objects. The thing is that the photons can't travel very far because the air surrounding the radiator always contains atoms. This means that the photons will readily be accepted and can't get further than a few centimetres. One point to note is that if the radiators were painted black there would be better releases and absorbers of heat meaning they would be more efficient than the brighter colours which are commonly used such as white which reflect the heat more rather than absorb it. As for conduction, this occurs in solids when molecules within the material are in direct contact with each other. The molecules are heated up due to the absorption of photons and the vibrations occur. This is because of heat energy being converted to kinetic energy, i.e. the energy of movement. Because of the closeness of the molecules to one another, vibration in one molecule initiates a vibration to those surrounding it due to bonds between them and the, them colliding. This process continues with each molecule inducing to the vibration in those surrounding them, allowing the heat to be quickly transferred from one side of the solid to another. This will work particularly well when the metals within the radiator, as there are a sea of free electrons which can also move around. This can be seen in a radiator when you physically touch it. Your hand will get warm and this is conduction. The main way that the heat is transferred throughout the room is again the absorption of photons by surrounding atoms. However, in this case, it's not the atoms within a solid, it is, however, the atoms within the molecules of air. The way it works is when the air is heated up next to the radiator, as common knowledge dictates, hot air rises. So it does just that. But why? The reason why is that hot air expands and becomes less dense. This means that it can flow above the more dense cooler air, displacing it. So the hot air rises and the cold air takes the place of the hot air. This means that the cold air rushes to the space occupied by the hot air right next to the radiator. It can now become hot. So this means that the cold air begin to rise 
just as the hot air did before it and by this time the hot air would have cooled and can drop down and this takes place the cold air. This cycle continues and is called a convection current and it allows heat to be transferred throughout the room relatively evenly. Now to look at how a radiator maintains a constant temperature within the room. The way it does this is by something called a thermostatic radiator valve or a TRV. This is placed on the inlet to the radiator meaning the hot water which flows into the radiator. This contains a pin which can be adjusted to either seal off the pipe containing the water or it can open it up so the water can be allowed to flow through. The other thing that it contains is either some wax or a thermally responsive metal which can adjust in size depending on the temperature. They will expand when heated and contract when cooled. And this diagram is represented by a coil. When heated, the coil will expand pushing the pin down. This means that water can no longer flow into the radiator so you won't get any hotter and on the other hand when it's too cool the pin will move up due to the contraction of the coil allowing the pipe to be opened up and hot water to flow through. Commonly a TRV will contain either some numbers or some symbols on top of it which means you can adjust the position of the pin. This means that you can control the desired temperature of the room fully. The same principles can be applied to other forms of heating apart from the normal wall mounted kind and that the common example is underfloor heating where the pipes are placed horizontally along the floor where the heat can be transferred to the air on top. Another type is a skating radiator where the pipes are traversed along the room allowing for more even heat distribution. Thanks a lot for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, leave a comment down below what you want to come next.